we start? Only five people have, no, 40 of okay. uh, Yes, we can go down. Okay, will we start? Can yes, sir. Yes, sir, we can start now. Okay. Uh, I welcome the listeners to this, uh, to the, the audience to this, uh, this session, uh, this interview with uh, a renowned filmmaker uh, Aparna Sen. This uh, program is brought to you by FFSI, which is the Federation of Film Societies of India, and Cipreski. And uh, um, Mr. Aparna Sen's uh, father, Chidanand Das Gupta, was closely involved in both of them at the beginning. And he was the first president of Cipreski as well. So I take this opportunity to welcome Aparna ji to this thing. It's a privilege uh, to talk to her here. So I will um, I will uh, begin by asking questions. Is that OK, Aparna ji? Is it all right? Shall we start? Of course, yes. Okay. Thank you. My pleasure, please. Um, <clears throat> your father was a pioneer. You're a person who's uh, donned many hats. You have you a multifaceted uh, personality. Person who's been uh, involved in acting, uh, writing, uh, journalism, and, and direction. We are That's more good. interested because in our platform and more interested in your work as a director. Uh, but the thing is, you, you came from a from a very cinephile background. Can you give us some some sense of uh, some sense of what kind of exposure you had uh, exposure you had to cinema in your early days, in your childhood and your youth? Well, you know, Raghavendra ji, my parents lived what can be called a life in the arts, because that was their life, you know. Um, we used to spend our time, uh, my parents used to read poetry to me. They would take us to art exhibitions, dance recitals. They would take us to Calcutta Film Society shows. In fact, we in our, we had a house with a very large uh, veranda. And over there, there was an 8 millimeter camera where we saw the best of world cinema. So uh, we really were exposed to the arts in a big way. I mean, we were taken to art exhibitions, museums music conferences, everything. And we used to uh, listen to uh, Western Indian classical music, uh, world music, uh, and, you know, pour over books of art with my parents. Uh, and the most important thing is that we had a great sense of self-worth because my parents didn't criticize us very much. There weren't too many rules. And they praised us a lot for any little thing that we did that they deemed praiseworthy. They used to praise us. So, you know, uh, our self-esteem was given a huge boost. And I never felt that as a girl, because I was a girl child, there was uh, anything in the world that I couldn't do. OK. Were there any, can you, can you cite any ex individual experiences with the cinephile, yeah, that is, a, a film viewing that you watched which influenced you deeply? Otherwise, the cinephile have that great moment. I mean, that's I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm saying, was there some great mo moment with cinema and your film watching in your early days, which in yeah. fact, stayed with you in your mind uh, for a long period of time, which later? later oh made yes, you yes, yes, yes. One of the things that stayed with me for a very, very long time was um, the passion of Joan of Arc. There, yeah. you know, uh, I, um, I forget the name of the filmmaker at this right. point of time. Uh, you will probably remember, but I remember um, very well um, how uh, you know how her face in close up, uh, the uh, the actor who played Joan of Arc, her face in close up, and also death. Uh, those moments have stayed with me in a big way. Another moment that has stayed with me is uh, you know uh, Ivan the Terrible. We saw Ivan the Terrible, I can say, yeah. this huge hall and this door opening and the light falling through the door. This has been done so many countless times after that. But that was the first time that I saw anything like that. OK, so, so these, these were the sort of these were the moments which sort of like probably the early silence. And of course, uh, I, uh, Ivan the Terrible would be the 30, part one, part two. And uh, this was very a silent film, which uh, John, John, Passion of John Novak Dyer's uh, film. It was on yeah. the, the 25 or 26 or something. Such thing. Yeah, it was an old, old film, you know, but at that time we were not allowed to watch any any uh, populist cinema at all. Okay. Uh, the first uh, Bengali film that I saw was Pothi Pancheli. First one, first one. Very first one. Okay. We were not allowed to watch anything. We were also very young. Okay. Um, 
I mean, when I when Pathir Pachali released, I was not even ten. Okay. So uh, before that, you know, the girls in school they used to watch those Suchitra Uttam stars, and they used to talk about that. And then we used to complain bitterly to our parents, saying, you know, we can't participate yeah. in the competition, okay. and uh, you know, we want to watch those films, and we haven't watched any Bengali films, etc. And yeah. uh, they said, uh, Baba said, I remember that. You just wait one more year. Okay. And uh, Manik he used to call you to try Manik. Manik uh, film uh, Pathir Panchali will be released, and then you will be allowed to see it. And I remember how deeply moved we were. I couldn't stop crying after the film was over, and I had no preconceived notions about uh, you know this kind of cinema. So uh, I you know I didn't expect any sort of romancing of hero heroine or Anything like that? It just went with the flow of the story as it unfolded, and uh, you know we absolutely we adored Indi Thakur and the entire family of Opu Durga Sharboja and Hori Hor. We identified so much, and today you know Raghavendra Ji. At this age, I realize that you know when uh, remember when uh, I think Nargis Ji had said once that. Uh, Satyajit Ray is uh, selling India's poverty oh, abroad. Yeah, in, in the Rajya Sabha, I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Who had said that? Uh, Rana Nargis in the Rajya Sabha. Yeah. Sabha, now, Sabha, yes. but I feel that on the contrary, he was uh, investing them with dignity because you <laughs> identified with them so much, and they were given a voice. They yes. were, they, they were like. Uh, you know, they were like real people like you and me, instead of being some rural people that you didn't know anything about. Yes. Since your father was a close friend of Satyajit of Satyajit mm -hmm. uh, That's right. When the film was being made, when Pathak Panchali was being made, were there already expectations about which way the film was going to turn up? I'm sorry. Already. Were there already expectations from your father? I mean, your father would yeah. already know absolutely. what was going on. Absolutely, absolutely. In fact. From all the intellectuals of Calcutta, I think at that time yeah. there was great expectations. Because we only know it as a finished product. We don't know how what was going on, you know, behind the scenes. Yeah. Like your, you know, they things. used to they used to sit and at a place called the India Coffee House, I think in uh, no, not College Street Coffee House. Okay. This was the India okay. Coffee House, possibly in Central Avenue. I don't know, but yeah. uh, there were a lot of people like Kumar Prasad Mukherjee, the singer. Then Radha Prasad uh, Gupta, R.P. Gupta, as he was known, all these people used to come, and they all, all of them had very, very high expectations of uh, the film. Okay. No, you were, you were, you began as an actress. What was your first experience as a, I mean, from behind the camera? First experience uh, from behind the camera. You know, um, I don't remember which the first shot was. But I, I had, I had actually acted in school, and I'd already decided to be an actor. Now I was, I remember, a little disappointed because I was constantly told what to do, you know, look that way, look that way, because I was a newcomer. So Ray had a very, very clear notion of what he wanted, uh, and uh, he used to tell me. But this used to make me feel a bit disappointed because I was not getting to show off any acting talent. Uh, <laughs> but but I realize now that he was using me actually. Uh, but there was one day, which I'll tell you about, where I had this squirrel in my hand, this uh, squirrel called Chorki, and I was supposed to carry it in my hand. And, um, you know, um, I, I was Samapti. supposed to stand outside. I'm so, some, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was okay. supposed to stand outside the window of my friend Rakhal's living room where his sister was being shown as a prospective bride to Shomitu Chatterjee. Okay. And uh, the squirrel is supposed to slip out of my hand and go into the room. Then I go after it and I create complete chaos in that room. Uh, but the thing is that the squirrel used to always um, actually wriggle out of my hand every time I lose my fist even a little bit. But that day it sat on the palm of my hand not moving at all. So I didn't know what to do, and I heard people saying that now it will be cut. I, I could hear people say, and, but you know, Manikaka, as I called him, didn't cut, 
and i didn't want i was i didn't want the film uh, you know shot to be rejected on my account so i pretended that i was showing it better to uh, rakhal and i put it on the sill you know of the window and then when it slipped out i pretended to uh, pretended to be very upset and got in and uh, i heard uh, bansi chandragupta whom i called bongshi kaka uh, he was saying holona holona means uh, it it wasn't okay but uh, mani kaka was laughing a lot and he said uh, but you know i rather liked it and that shot has remained in the film so that has been one of the high points in my uh, thing uh, in shopti what about your other uh, experiences from behind the camera as i mean watching looking at looking through the camera not in front of the camera what about those with your first experience because you became a director later on yeah and uh, actually we started with the shot of the uh, pujas because the pujas you know that year we started actually shooting on december 3 because the pujas uh, were earlier so and also it was raining sometimes so we shot some rain shots and the puja shots at that time earlier on before we started the actual shooting um and uh i was my experiences were how should i say i could see the film so clearly in my mind that um i had uh, actually no problem i mean i often uh, i couldn't say what lenses i wanted uh, ashok would ask me ashok mehta often would ask me that what what lens should i put ma'am so i would say i don't know you know just show me show me few samples and then he would show me and then i would uh, i would say no i want this so i was very uh, because i was uh, that picture was absolutely i had complete clarity about the visuals i wanted so i i don't um, you know it was not it was very exciting of course oh, your first film is it yeah it was i remember one thing uh, that is quite funny that is i was feeling very shy to say start and end okay i had never done that i never uh, i had never been a director before uh, and uh, so i told my assistant that i said i listen i'll poke you in the back and uh, or in the arm and uh, then you say start and when i poke you again you say cut okay he said it's the other way around i will poke you and you say cut and then i poke you and you say cut but you know because most of the directors that he had worked with particularly first time directors you know he had to actually uh, tell them what to do but uh, because i was so i was so completely convinced about my film and so clear about the visuals uh, i said no but i felt very shy to say start and cut this i remember this is your this is you're talking about uh, 36 jorangile 36 jorangile my very very any short films or anything before that short films Sorry. from expert here any short films before that any other experiences making films okay i think that, that was the very very first film that i ever did okay can you tell us something about the making of that film in the sense that uh, i don't mean uh, the i mean the actual conception of the film Can you tell us something. How did you how did you come across the I come up with the idea of making an English language film, your uh, the, the story that kind of thing. How did you? You know what happened. I was actually shooting in Bombay for a mainstream film, but uh, I was most unhappy. You know, and I was waiting in the uh, makeup room, and I was thinking that oh, for the rest of my life, will I just keep having to do this? You know, acting in films that I don't believe in and the kind of cinema I don't believe in. Uh, because these were all mainstream, and at that time, mainstream cinema was even much more mainstream than it is today. So uh, today, the dividing lines between mainstream cinema and art cinema oh, has yeah. uh, blurred somewhat. But at that time, it was very, very, uh, very marked. The differences were marked. Hmm. <clears throat> so uh, then I, uh, you know, I said I can't keep doing this. So why don't I do something? Why don't I start writing a short story? because i used to be uh, reasonably good at writing in school and college and so i started writing a short story but i didn't want to write about something i didn't know uh, even though i was at that time a disciple of uh, upal dats and i was very much very leftist and so on so on 
so forth. But I didn't try to write about farmers or you know uh, factory workers because I said I don't know their life. So um, then I thought, why don't I write about uh, some uh, you know one of our uh, school teachers who taught us in school. Okay. And I used to see these Anglo-Indian teachers who were not always very good teachers, but they were very affectionate and very good people. And I used to feel very sorry for them because at that time, Anglo-Indians were looked down upon quite a lot. Uh, so um, I started writing, but it became more and more visual, and it became longer and longer and longer, far longer than a short story should be. And at one point, I even got my writing dissolved. Okay. <laughs> so I said, you know, this doesn't want to be a short story; it wants to be a film. Okay. So okay. I, I then wrote it. Uh, it took a long time, you know. I, I wrote it out as a screenplay after that. So Miss Stoneham is actually taken from one of your school uh, experiences. Roughly, well, I mean, a kind of. She was modeled on. Uh, she was modeled on some of our teachers, particularly one Miss Bolt, okay. who used to teach us Shakespeare very badly. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, uh, but there was uh, something of her, not entirely. Not entirely. Okay. Because Miss Stoneham recites from Lear, if I remember right. King I'm sorry. Uh, Miss Stoneham recites from King Lear at the end of the play. Yes. Yes, yes. Yes. So the, the connection is that, <laughs> right, right? Yes. You know, uh, she teaches Shakespeare, but okay. uh, I think she understands Shakespeare through her life experience for the okay. first time that okay. night. Okay. Okay. Before now, that, she used to just put down meanings and things like that, meanings of words, and she used to teach Shakespeare very badly. Okay. But I think she understood uh, understood Shakespeare herself. Because okay. of her own experiences of being betrayed. Okay, okay, yeah, that is, yeah, that's right. That's why this, this George Burgi scene becomes so poignant because it's it relates to her in some sense, right? That's right. Yeah. yeah. Now, Parama is your second film, isn't it? Parama, yeah. you brought this thing of adultery. Ray already handled this uh, thing of adultery. It's not a very common uh, theme. Ad adultery is not a common theme. What made you bring up this theme of, uh, and how would you sort of? Were, were you in, uh, influenced by the three of Ray's important films, um, this uh, Charulata, Gare uh, Bayre, and uh, no. Piku? No, nothing like that. Nothing like that. You know what happened was I first of all I wa I waited five years. I think okay. my first film was released in 1981. My second film was released in 1985, four years later. Okay. And everyone was saying, why aren't you making your second film? I said, because I have nothing to say. And then, you know, there was a friend of mine in school. Okay. And she was a very good, she was the head girl. She was a very good student. She used to be good at sports, good at elocution, good at studies, good at everything. She was also very good looking. Um, and, uh, you know, um, we admired her a lot, and she was one of my best friends. Then we went to uh, her uh, her son's rice ceremony, you know, the first time the child eats rice. And I found this friend of mine uh, from school. She was uh, over there. She was, you know, somebody came to her and, uh, you know, touched her feet saying, aunt, how are you? And she was an aunt-in-law. And then she blessed that girl, and, you know, she touched the girl's... Uh, a chin and she blessed the girl and then uh, in between she chatted with us about school and uh, then she uh, you know uh, then somebody else came some other aunt or some other in-law and she touched that woman's feet and somebody was calling her uh, Bodhi somebody was calling her Kakima and I thought where has my friend gone I mean in all the social roles that she's playing she seems to be playing all these different social roles that she is has cast herself in has the original uh, girl got lost? Where okay. is she? Okay. This idea stayed with me for some time, for okay. about a couple of years maybe. And then it came out in this school. It, okay. No, this here I was not. Actually, you know, I think I was very influenced by Ray <clears throat> in, um, in terms of the lighting that he did, the detailing that he did, and so on and so forth. 
but uh, uh, I I don't think that I I uh, actually ever tried to imitate him or take something from the stories that he did. In fact, when I told him about Param, I I went to him. He was, as I told you, my mentor. As I've told everyone, he really was a mentor. So when I told him about Parama, then he said, "Why are you making this? Because it only ends in heartache. Nobody's happy. What is the use?" So I I didn't see it like that. I couldn't explain to him at that time that uh, I uh, it was not it was about her finding her identity more than about adultery. Adultery the adultery part was just a catalyst. Rahul coming into her life. Rahul was a catalyst. For really, her finding herself, she had okay. got lost among the social roles that she was playing out. Okay. There is this uh, scene in the film where the husband is seen to be flirting or in some kind of sexual, or rather, he makes a move of some sort. He gets rejected, right? Yeah. Film, uh, I mean, what, uh, why did you have to put? Why did you put that scene in? That the husband is also culpable. If he had the chance, he would be culpable. No, because of the because of the hypocrisy that I found okay. among the beings. Okay, okay. I wanted so, to I wanted to bring out that hypocrisy, that okay. it's okay for a man to do it, but it's not okay for a woman. Okay, okay. So yeah, I get that. Yeah. So so yeah. So yeah, yeah I can. Yeah, it's it's a kind of hypocrisy. It's there in the other thing, like Parumita Reddin also. She sees the man right in the in the restaurant when he she's with her uh, mother. No, no, with the mother-in-law. Uh, yeah. That he sees the man in the restaurant. The wife yeah. sees that. Yeah. So it's somewhat the same thing, right? It's the same. Yeah, thing except well. that over there I did it. Over there I did it mainly because I had to introduce uh, the girl that uh, this man would marry sometime. You know, and you have to try and make your film as economical as possible in terms of writing. You know, uh, one scene has to serve many purposes. So that one scene where she's with her mother-in-law had to serve some other purpose also. So I thought yeah. it was a good point to introduce the uh, uh, the the um, you know the second wife, the the another girl that he would marry. Okay. Now you you uh, this uh, situation of women's condition in India is a very a very a very important thing in your film. But uh, yeah. it's more at the individual level. We don't look upon. I mean. I wouldn't call you a feminist. I mean, the, my own sense is that feminists sort of tend to look upon women as a class or a category of some sort. You're always dealing with the individual woman in some sense. Could you elaborate on that? What is the general thing? Yeah, but then you know the uh, concept of feminism has changed over the years, and yeah. now includes a lot of things. You know, uh, actually now includes really all marginalized. Uh, okay. People. Uh, the concept of feminism, early feminism and today's feminism are very different. I am a feminist, but I'm a feminist more to the extent that I'm a humanist. And my feminism is part of my humanism. Okay. I mean, I'm equally concerned with child rights or equally concerned with rights of uh, female, uh, of laborers or mine workers. Uh, or, you know, I might not always make a film about it, but I'm very concerned. Uh, about um, you migrant laborers right now t at this point of time. Uh, so it's uh, it's not uh, it's not that I I'm just concentrating on uh, feminism, and besides I don't usually make films with any ism in mind or uh, with with a uh, with a, a view to uh, you know um, preaching a conscious message because uh, I don't think that. Uh, films are a kind of pulpit for somebody to preach. Uh, in fact, um, uh, I think that uh, Raghavendraji, every person, whether they know it or not, has their own politics. Yes, yes. You know, no, there's no human being who is not political. Actually, the very act of voting is a political act. Yes, yes. So uh, mm -hmm. I also have my own politics. You know, it's a left liberal kind of politics, and um, it's um, also mm -hmm. feminist. Very much so. You can't be a left liberal without being feminist, okay. and uh, 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 you know. Uh, so I've always uh, actually talked about individuals and tried to uh, approach them deeply, probe into them until I get to the you know absolutely deepest inner being of the person. You know, the loneliness, the uh, the solitary person inside. Um, 
so um through the individual when i talk about the individual then a larger kind of uh, you know larger politics emerges often without my knowing it so you could say that uh, you you will not uh, illustrate doctrine in your film your no, no i don't yeah, like yeah yeah that's right like, so the lot yeah. of a lot of political cinema is the illustration of doctrine right so i go yeah that i never find in your film that you're actually exploring individual experience in some way which would reflect on on political viewpoints on ideology and that sort of thing but never as a vehicle for ideology okay coming yeah. to the other thing uh, this is very interesting thing of uh, household relationships like marriage marriages is called a very important uh, a very important in your films they occupy a lot of space parometer ek din this uh, parometer marriage is called household discord basically Oh, marital discord. Yes, oh, yes. Marital discord. Yes. Yeah, but between relationships, it sort of it takes up a lot of your uh, films and sort of it focuses a lot on. Yeah, that. yeah, it's there in uh, Paramita Ragin, Juganto, uh, yeah, then yes. um, yeah, in Paroma, it's there in all these films. Yes. Yeah, there's not much in the Indian art cinema doesn't usually deal with this. It doesn't usually deal with household discord. Now what is it do? I think. Mm-hmm. nowadays uh, things have changed yeah no but, but you know um, um marriage since it's still a uh, institution of course i think it's fast disappearing but it's still uh, uh, i mean when i've made these films marriage is very much an institution that is alive you know in our country and uh, i think it's mostly that uh, people are uh, most people are polyamorous you know but they are forced by society to be monogamous and also marriage is one of the most difficult uh, situations particularly if um, unless um, uh, unless uh, you know the hierarchy of male over female is accepted by both parties okay so if if the woman has a mind of her own and if she kind of uh, asserts herself there's bound to be marital discord okay so uh, i found that to be true uh, not uh, not only in films i mean i've found that to be true around me uh, all the time and then people keep up a pretense there are more marriages i used to think when i saw uh, couples happy couples apparently happy couples <clears throat> i used to always think that these people are happy later i found out that there was a lot of pretense going on Yeah, that actually, there was not a man. Outward, they have to maintain certain things. There's party behavior, there's social behavior of some sort. Outwardly, they maintained yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's also true in America. I think it's, it's sort of in Hollywood. Yeah. Also, there is this big thing of marriage, the happy, happy marriages, and that sort of thing. Yeah, they they keep talking about family, but they keep divorcing and then changing families. Yeah, but off screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, I found this character played by Shamitra in Paramita Rekdin very interesting. Can you say something about him? The friend okay. who doesn't have the courage, doesn't have the courage, reminiscent of Kapoor, who actually plays a similar role. Shamitra, I'm yeah. sorry, again. I'm saying this character in the, played by Shamitra in Paramita Rekdin. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the lover who doesn't have the courage, commitment, yeah. right? I yeah. was reminded of the same kind of role he played in Kapoorish in Reyes Kapoorish. Yes, except that here he's uh I think he's treated with much more sympathy. Yes, yes, yes. There is something I I felt a lot of sympathy <clears throat> for this character who's essentially weak but good. He's a good man. Um you know, he's a good man. He's very sympathetic to uh to uh, paramita he's very sympathetic to um uh, kuku the 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 uh the, you know um the uh, cha- uh okay. schizophrenic sister in law yes. and all that so i find him to be a very good man who is just a weak person maybe doesn't didn't ha- ever have the uh, financial means to marry somebody like uh, uh shonoka the character that i play uh, but he loved him all his life and uh, but she calls him she's angry and she calls him coward but you know if uh, she says that if he had even once asked me i would have dropped everything uh, my family my children my husband wouldn't have looked back and i would have gone with him uh, but did he have the guts men don't have the guts 
you know, uh, she says that in her anger. But the point is that if <clears throat> he actually had asked her to elope with him, for instance, uh, how would they have lived? Already she has to uh, pay him for you know, his medicines and stuff like that for his extra expenses. She pays him out of her own, uh, you know, her own earnings, which her brother had left her. So I think that uh, that would, would have been a disaster yes. if he had actually, if she had actually walked out with him. So yeah, you can say it's reminiscent of Kapurush, except that in Kapurush, um, uh, Kapurush, um, I don't think uh, Shomitro in Kapurush has the reason for doing what he's doing. Why didn't he in the beginning, right in the beginning? Why didn't he? Well, I think also partly because he couldn't afford it. You know, he would. He said that, where, where will I, I? I can't bring you to this room. But then even later on, when he became, um, you know, uh, more financially solvent, even then he was... Uh, he was it he was not able to uh you know fall exactly what was his financial status in that film he was not he was hard up wasn't he did he have a job in that film at that, time, at that time in kapuru shomitra doesn't have a job yeah. and he has he lives in this one room and he says where will i where will i bring you what will i feed you you okay. know so he's he has that he has his reason but the second time around what is his reason like Why does he look like he's a coward? Yeah, he's a coward, and and also he's trying to take advantage of her in some way, you know, without commitment. Again, I got the. I mean, it's not a. Yeah. It's not a yeah, it's not sympathetic. Uh, position is not. Sympathetic. Yeah, you don't feel sympathy for the for uh, Shomitro, but I think in uh, Paramita Ragdin you do feel show uh, sympathy. Yeah, for yeah, he's actually very sympathetic. He's actually a very warm personality. He seems yeah. helpless, but he's very warmly portrayed. Okay. Yeah. This barometer Ekpin, this thing of the, fa the, the father's death, right? Yeah. Well, there, there are no ceremonies and nothing associated with that. The, I mean, it's sort of glossed over in some sense. Whereas the mother's death is given a lot of uh, what was there in the conscious decision on your part. Yeah, yeah you know what? Uh, uh, that was not important. Okay. What was important was the sense of freedom that she got after her husband died. Yeah, okay. But uh, what ceremony there was, etc., was not really. Uh, I felt was not important to the story, not important to the character development. Okay, all right. Now, if you take three films, Barometer, then Fifteen Park Avenue. Also, both of them, two of them, have this uh, thing of mental disadvantage, mental uh, illness or disorder as a as a theme. Can you, can you say something about that? What that? Why you brought that up? What is the? Uh, yeah, well, <clears throat> I uh, I have a relative, a close relative, who has schizophrenia, okay. and uh, this was you can say my tribute to her. Uh, Fifteen Park Avenue, Parumita Ragdin also I think uh, the she she actually I, I have drawn upon uh, this relative. Uh, and because I've seen her condition at very, very close quarters. And uh, in Paramita Ragdin, Kuku is also used as, and she's a very kind hearted person. So is this relative of mine, kind hearted, hospitable, warm, but uh, with no sense of reality. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and this has also, uh, this thing about what is real and what is not, that has been. Uh, quite a concern with me, you know, because I, uh, I've often felt that um, it's a tyranny of the majority because all of us, you know, when we, when we see a situation, like the way I will perceive it and the way you will perceive it will be minutely different, won't it? Because we are different people with yeah. different mindsets and different ways of reacting. But in the case of a schizophrenic, it's widely widely divergent i mean because you sh usually in schizophrenia and i found out usually in schizophrenia it's because they find uh, real life as we know it so painful that they have to create a uh, create a kind of imaginary life for themselves hmm. and of course there are certain chemicals 
that are you know that go wrong in the brain and they have to have medication and sometimes if it's detected very early it can be uh, cured but if it's it's not often detected early because people don't uh, you know people first of all people are uh, very uh, used to be they are better now but they used to be very uh, reluctant about uh, you know exposing the fact that there was somebody who had a mental condition at home so they would not even see doctors lots of people used to think oh if you get her married off she'll become okay or if you get him married off she he'll become okay actually that never happens you know that really doesn't ever happen because these people i've talked to doctors are not really capable of sustaining any long term relationships at all um and uh i i um i felt always you know uh, that all in most of the films that we've seen even among the great greatest filmmakers that if you think of the triumvirate uh, of uh, ray uh, sen and uh, ghatak even there you know if you think about uh, the uh, they have shown the rural poor by the way but uh, you know you don't see any challenged people very rarely i can't remember any at least you know yeah. where the person is uh, sometimes you have some blind people in some of our films and then the blind person is kind of i have played a blind person in a, in a popular film but um, usually challenged people are not seen um, any kind of uh, mental illness very rarely is shown uh, but you know they form part of our citizenry they are not invisible but in our films we make them invisible and i didn't want to do that i didn't want to do that at all yeah. so yeah actually, because we will be quite moving these characters both of them are schizophrenic isn't it both uh, the both, both the of them are schizophrenic yeah. and the little child is uh, has a uh, So, cerebral palsy okay. and i used to go to this institute of cerebral palsy started by a lady called sudha kol whose son had cerebral palsy and she she then uh, started this institute after that and um, you know i um, i felt that uh, it it was such an enlightening experience going there there was even a young girl who was so keen to help us with our continuity you know she couldn't speak properly but she kept tell, trying to tell me that you know this was not like this this was like this in the last shot so it's it it was very moving uh, i saw i saw a boy who uh, worked on the computer uh, with his uh, you know uh, with his tongue he okay. uh, uh, another one worked with his foot and then uh, you know he wrote a letter to madhuri dikshit because he was a great fan of madhuri dikshit's and then uh, then uh, he asked me to give it to her i didn't know how to give it to her so i had it sent to husain saab and i don't know if she got it okay okay in, my, in many of your films uh, this uh, this thing of, of uh, you know cruelty and i don't mean um, i don't mean violence i don't mean domestic violence gender based violence but this thing for example of people being cruel to each other children for example mocking the plastic chair making the yeah mock. yeah i mean this normally children. you don't find yeah children you know the, the, the cruelty on the part of suppose, supposedly innocent uh, beings um you do not normally shown in cinema this but children, but children can be very cruel you know very, yeah but not many people hatch on to I mean, latch on to that in indian cinema you don't see that very often yeah you uh, children are shown only as very sweet Yes, I mean with the uh, dulcet voice and very sweet, <laughs> completely innocent. This, yeah. this this thing of cruelty of people being uh, not political cruelty like gender based thing, not domestic violence, but this is there very much in Bergman's films, Fanny and Alexander, the way children are treated, the way you know this uh, was was Bergman any kind of influence upon you? I think if I remember right, Ritu Parno, uh, I think adapted the uh, Autumn Sonata. Yeah, I think. It was Bergman in influence upon you and all these. Sonata? I'm sorry, I didn't get that. Autumn Sonata. You know, I'm saying Bergman uses this thing of domestic cruelty, cries and whispers, 
things from my yeah, it's almost unbearable sometimes. But if the point is Godi, would you influence on you in all these movies in this this uh, thing of showing uh, this kind of cruelty? You know something. Uh, you see these films and they affect you, but it's very difficult to tell uh, whether, because it's at a subconscious level, you know, and you don't you can't analyze your own subconscious. Uh, so uh, it is possible that uh, they, they, it might have had some effect on me because I was deeply moved by Cries and Whispers, for instance, or Fanny and Alexander. But you know, I uh, <clears throat> I don't know if uh, not a direct influence. Yeah, I know, but because, because I can't, I can't uh, tell. I can't the world, tell. The world becomes different after watching Bergman. In some sense, you know, you start seeing, noticing things in the world which you didn't notice earlier. So amplified by art, that's one of the things of cinema I've amplified um, probably that way. Perhaps you know, uh, the thing is your your world vision, your vision of life is formed by your childhood, the people who brought you up, the relatives around you, your friends, influences, films you see, books you read. Uh, it's it's a it's a complete mix up of all of these things. So it's very difficult to tell we, what, what uh, triggered what? Okay. The Japanese wife is a film which I found uh, interesting. How did you hit upon it? The complete absence of drama because they never meet. How did yeah. you? I mean, how did you arrange that? You know, this was uh, uh, Kunal Basu is a friend of ours now. Uh, okay. Kunal and I were once thinking of uh, working on a script together, and he had come over. And we were not making any headway. So we took a coffee break. And then he said, let me tell you a story. So then he told me this story. And I was so charmed with it because there's something so bizarre about the fact, bizarre and funny and tender uh, and pure and so many other things about the fact that two people never meet. They, they consider themselves married through letters. And uh, then they remain faithful to each other all their life. Yeah. There's it's something bad. so, so it's charming bad. about it. Uh, that I, I told Kunal, I said, please don't give it to anybody else. I want to play. This, you are not handy up with the fact that the actors don't play against each other. In the interpersonal relationship, uh, the thing of actors have to play against each other, right? I mean, like, uh, like this thing of, uh, what is the word? Um, upstaging each other, that's, that is this tendency, right? That helps usually the, the director, doesn't it? If two actors are confronting each other, there's a certain intense drama brought about by the fact that they're actually people confronting each other. Not only yeah. the character, but, but the fact that they're completely absent here. How did you try to solve that? Did you try to solve that? Totally okay. absent. What is, what is actually very funny is the fact that he goes around with his wife's uh, reports and then he goes around, uh, you know, to doctors, etc., trying to explain. And the doctor says, please bring her. And then she lives in Japan. You know, the whole thing, I I found the whole thing actually also very funny. Funny and at the same time very tender. Uh, I, 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 and I tried to make it, my intention when I made The Japanese Wife was to make a film which would resemble a Japanese watercolor. Very minimalistic. Very, uh, you know, um, sort of no, no drama as such. Nothing. Yes, what I didn't want. The actress her? Where did you? Was she a professional actress? The one who played the wife? Oh, the actress, the Japanese actress. Yes. Well, you know, we went to Japan. We had a very tiny budget for this kind of film because shooting in Japan is very expensive. So we went to Japan, and then uh, there was this hotel that. Our Japanese production controller took us to this hotel, you know, and uh, he said, uh, "All you are allowed to have is a cup of coffee. Uh, you are not allowed to uh, actually eat anything else." And these girls will come, and then I shortlisted, I think, three or four, and then I asked them, "Can I please feel your head?" <laughs> so they, <laughs> Deva said, "Finally, I, you know, when I got this girl, Chigusa Takaku." Uh, I said, can I feel your head? I, I like you. I, I want to cast you, but can I feel your head? So 
she couldn't understand a word of english and of course we were speaking through interpreters and uh, then she let me feel her head and she asked me through the interpreter why so i said because she has to have her head shaven and i want to know how what shape her skull is okay so uh, that was something quite funny but she allowed me to do that and she had a perfectly shaped skull so it was uh, good now mrs and mrs ayer and gari gari bhai re aaj uh, you got into political thing which has become very pertinent today yeah this politics has become very pertinent can you say something about the political role of the artist filmmaker uh, in today's world what exactly you see your role as a, polit as a your political role as a filmmaker yeah in fact it's there in another film also uh, in a different way but that's a musical uh i made another film called arshi nagar based on romeo and juliet uh which was actually uh, not which was not at all accepted by the public but uh, it's there also in in that film uh, you know ever since the demolition of the babri masjid one of the things that i have been deeply concerned with is uh, the lack of communal harmony in our country uh, and in fact when i was uh, editor of shanunda i was uh, constantly uh, you know um, uh, most of my editorials in fact were written about this um, and you know when i started making uh, mr and mrs ayer they were not actually supposed to be hindu and muslim it was just supposed to be a love story which was uh, which happens during a journey in a bus because i used to think of a journey in a, a physical journey as a kind of metaphor for an internal journey because you know you change your, during a journey you discover things about yourself you, you know um, these things are there so um i um i uh, uh i started writing just about two people and i don't know how they became hindu and muslim <laughs> right. initially it was not supposed to be like that Okay. but things like that happen you know in in 36 chorangilane for instance miss tonam was supposed to go away but characters you know even characters that you've created yourself they take on a life of their own and then they tell you what they want to do okay they sort of so yeah, they start living on their own sort of yeah sort of thing yeah happens. but you were asking me about the filmmaker's role in uh, in terms of politics i think a filmmaker uh, or a true artist always reacts to what is happening around her or him you know this is this is very important that uh, this uh, the the because that the filmmaker or an, any artist is aware of what's happening otherwise we today you know we would not have had picasso's guernica for instance uh, but uh, it's important and i think ray also did that he reacted a lot to what was happening around him that's why we have his city films you know uh, like uh, john orono or uh, uh, pratik dondi films like that uh, <clears throat> but uh, i think i i uh, i don't want to preach but i think it's important that uh, a filmmaker react in the way she feels about the world around her and the changing world around her like in uh, in uh, in uh ghore bai riyaz it is i'm not actually talking about any political party as such i haven't named any political party and i'm i'm not i was talking more about the idea of india that is changing you know okay so that 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 to me is something that i should be talking about and uh, i think a filmmaker should be talking about uh, what is happening around her but without preaching and uh, talking through individual stories nowadays i think there's, there's a tendency to take newspaper reports and make films out of them you know i mean you have mob and, lynching you uh, have a film about mob lynching you have something about caste discrimination um, uh, yeah. brahmin dalit then you have a film about brahmin dalit it seems to be i mean the this element of personal experience seems to be mediated by the media and by the by the newspaper in many ways that is i don't see that in your films that you're really dealing with more, more organic life in some way which which is no. politics i mean i haven't made a film about lynching yet yeah. 
<laughs> Anything which occupies this the newspaper becomes a kind of uh, you know a kind of uh, guide for what you how, how you pick up the subject. Am I audible? Yeah. Okay. Hello. Juno. Ah, yeah, yeah. Please come, come inside. Juno. We can. MK, please wait. I, I think that there is a power cut. Okay. okay no problem. No problem. In our, she will be joining. Well, uh, yeah. Just can wait. you see me? Yeah, no, we cannot see you, but we can uh, hear you. Yeah. All right, let's go. Go on. Wait, can the, the, camera, the uh, image come? Video come? You, let's continue. Yeah, mm -hmm. let's come back. Okay. Okay. I can't, I can't can see you see me now? No, I can't tell you. Uh, I don't know. You should be able to see me. I don't know why not. Are you seeing her? Are you seeing her? Um, or, uh, no, she's not, not, she's not visible, but camera, I I think the camera is to make on. I'm asking the band to help you. Just to, just to okay, okay, okay. Wait the band? Better to wait, I think. Uh, but we can listen. We can hear you properly. Participants are requested to stay. Uh, she will she'll be joining right now. There is a power cut at her place. Yeah, I don't know why. Um, um, let me just switch on your video once. It will be on the top, just beside the blue icon. What do you want me to do? Uh, yeah. What about blue icon? Uh, just left to it, there is another icon that is the video icon. Man. Uh, the blue icon is for mic, it's on. Uh -huh. Just left to it, uh, there exactly. is another icon. Oh, okay, got it. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. I'm back. Hello, everyone. Okay. Is that, that I think that question you want to say anything more about this political role of the filmmaker who interrupted? Yeah, well, uh, yeah, what I was saying is I lost track of it. 
<clears throat> is that I think the uh, it is important for the the artist to uh, react to these things without preaching. Uh, and to, uh, for instance, if you think something very unfair is going on in society, it's important to talk about it without preaching, with, you know, trying to, in fact, make, uh, you know, some most of the time, like in uh, Mr. and Mrs. I felt that when people are killed in riots, you just hear numbers, you know, that so many people were killed, so many people were killed. Now, these numbers are given faces by the film. Uh, in this, uh, in... Uh... Gare Bare Aaj, Nikhil yeah. is Bengali, Sandeep is not Bengali. Is there any commentary here on uh, the right wing uh, being outside the... Of course, uh, of course there is. Of course there is. There is, uh, there is. And you know, it's very important because I feel that the idea of the India that I love, the pluralistic, the uh, you know, rich, diverse India that I, ha I have loved, and I've been a proud citizen of that India is changing, and I don't want it to change. And Gauri okay. Bangli Aaj was the, the story was perfect, a foil for this. Because if you somebody said, Why is it so political? So I said, If you read Tagore's Gauri Bairi, then you will see how political it is. Okay, politics is a very, very important element of uh, uh, the story itself. Okay. But it was the politics of that time, and because I'm making it today, it's the politics of today. Is there any, I mean, what I meant was, is there any commentary here on uh, right wing politics being external to Bengal in some way, intrinsically? Not about Bengal, because it's set in Delhi. Oh, okay, okay. okay. The film right. is set in Delhi. Yeah, she lives in Delhi, correct? That's right, that's right. So it's not, mm. Bengal is not an issue there. Yeah. yeah. Can you say something about the women filmmakers from around the world who, uh, what lines of line of inquiry they should take? What is your any idea about any on what uh, about generally about women filmmakers in the world? Do they have? To well, I'm them? not so aware of the present women filmmakers in the world, except for some people, like for instance, uh, um, uh, you know, um, what was the film that she made, Lost in Translation? Uh, Okay. Uh, Coppola, Sophia Coppola. Coppola, yeah. Uh, she she is very very good, I think. And then I've seen a uh, seen a whole number at film festivals, but I can't remember their names. You know, okay. It's very difficult. But I do do know uh, filmmakers in India who are very good, okay. and I admire them a lot. And uh, I think the number of uh, women filmmakers in India has increased a lot. Yes, quite and that's a very, very encouraging sign. Yeah, okay. So I think this generally completes my thing. Shall we start with the question? Questions now? You can ask questions. Let's look, come to the end. Okay. Any questions from anyone? Okay. We are not finding parallel cinema filmmakers now, and legendary filmmakers are not making films. What is your thing on parallel cinema? Any anything on what was called parallel cinema? It seems to disappear now in some sense, isn't it? Yeah, because it's no longer relevant. Okay. You no, know, because the stories now, uh, the kind of films you have now, are all uh, you know. You uh, now story is king. You don't you don't have those blockbusters. I mean, once in a while you do, but uh, the as I was saying, the divide between uh, what used to be known as parallel cinema. And what used to be known as uh, commercial cinema, no. that line has blurred. Yeah, so that I mean, line is no longer so much. I think there is now entertainment cinema, which is uh, like uh, the lunchbox and all that, which is not uh, parallel cinema. At the same time, it is not. So yeah, you are you are right about it. Um, pink. Lunchbox. Could... Lunchbox would have been considered parallel cinema, uh, you know, when we used to talk about parallel cinema. It would have been considered parallel cinema because it has none of the, none of the um, uh, sort of, um, you know, a typical um, uh, formula entertainment stuff in it at all. At the same time, it doesn't have a issue based thing, right? That is issue based. I, I, think I, do, I, I personally don't like issue based uh, cinema. Yes. Yeah. 
In fact, that, parallel cinema, I think, died a, a premature death because it concentrated too much on issues and less on individuals. It, it's there. Art cinema is still there in some sense. There is, uh, it's, it's still visible here and there. It doesn't, for but, example, at uh, Benegal and uh, people like Govind Nihalani, Benegal, that kind of parallel cinema, which is like, yeah, uh, yeah, one point yeah. is pretty powerful. It's pretty powerful. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, but they're not making films so much anymore. Yeah. I don't see them making films anymore. Okay, I've got uh, some more questions. Um, we have seen a wide change in the distribution process of cinema. Nowadays, OTT platform or web media is growing. So uh, what what is your uh, response to this OTT? New and new I think platforms are coming. I think it's good because it exposes people to, I mean, you get a lot of exposure to world cinema through OTT platforms. Yeah. Earlier, you had to depend on film society shows or film festivals. But okay. now, because of the OTT platform, you are exposed to world cinema very easily. Okay. It's, and also, I think um, when it comes to OTT platforms, this important thing is that new people can get an opening there, right? They don't uh, have to depend on the distribution in cinema theaters. It probably yeah, that's one. Work. And then yeah. uh, also, censorship issues are not there. Okay, censorship, uh, yeah, it's not there. So I think probably on the low budget films, which uh, reach a certain level of uh, I mean, uh, quality, they seem to find, you know, I mean, if you can manage it properly, also profitable, you can show it and it reaches a number of people. Uh, you can, you can. Uh, Definitely, except that it's, uh, uh, I think it's quite expensive uh, to actually, um, quite, ex I mean, uh, when they buy, I don't think that kind of, uh, in the producer's cost is covered. Okay. They don't pay a great deal. Which, this, uh, these uh, OTT platforms? They don't ah, pay I think I'm under that impression, but I could be wrong. I don't know. Uh, could you, um, um, uh, Aparnaji, could you please advise one quint quintessential element for new filmmakers to remember while making their films? Advice for new filmmakers. As a, for uh, a advice to new filmmakers would be, you know, there are so many variables in a film, so many things can go wrong and will go wrong. It's very important to stick to your vision, remain calm, and think on your feet that you certain thing that you had planned uh, you know, has not uh, worked out. So immediately you must have an alternative in mind what to do. It's very important. And and be remain true to your vision at the same time. Um, there's one person uh, asking, um, Sujata asks, why are we not, why is this an emphasis on realism? So rather than you don't have surrealism, for instance, and you don't have the I mean, I'm talking about the uh, the art film, the art film, the parallel film, or whatever the whatever is replaced it. There seems to be a thing on realism in some sort. There seem to be, you know, that that fantastic element, the you know, the surreal element is uh, missing. No, there is. You know, there are in in uh, at least in some of my films there have been, yeah. uh, but also in films all over the world, run Lola run, that is uh, not uh, not realistic at all. No, Indian cinema, I think, you're talking about. Your film, I suppose, this, uh, Indian cinema, yeah, um, there is there is this absolutely fantastic film that I've seen uh, by Thyagaraj and Rajakumara called Super Deluxe. Oh yes. You know? yes, yes, yes. It's it's not uh, it's not realistic. It's it's <laughs> very <laughs> weird and uh, very. Yeah, so what a like that you have films like that but the thing is one doesn't get to see all of them yeah you don't yeah that's right and i don't think that there is any uh any um uh, it is not incumbent upon the filmmaker to constantly make uh films that are uh you know um, that uh reflect everyday reality you don't have to yeah. uh, you can make surreal films you can make uh fantasy films, you can make so many different kinds of films. 15th Park Avenue, you're the closing thing, is sort of, sort of magical realist. She disappears into the house. There's no house, but she disappears. Right? She goes into the house, 15th Park Avenue. 
I'm office, sorry. In your office, fifteen Park Avenue. Ha. Huh. Yeah, it's at the end. Yeah, yeah, it's magical realism. Then yeah, then you go, go into magic realism. Then yeah, in, uh, in in my film called uh, Arshi Nagar, I've had sets where furniture, which people don't actually sit on or use, a uh, furniture is painted. Okay. You know, okay. because and and the uh, the uh, the cityscape, for instance, Lucknow is shown. The terrace is real, but the uh, cityscape is painted. You know, because I wanted to introduce the element of theater. Okay. Because it was based on a Shakespeare play. Which was that? Which was the play? This film you probably haven't seen. It's called Arshi Nagar. Okay. It's based on Romeo and Juliet, where Juliet is a Muslim girl and Romeo is a Hindu boy. Okay. Uh, Ashok Ray says the character Kuku was portrayed in a very thoughtful manner. Uh, the two Rabindra Sangeet were, was chosen. And uh, mm. what was the thing? Did you use? Uh, I mean, this thing she sings beautifully. The fact, I mean, how did you idea uh, use music in that way? In that, you know, it brings a certain the use of music in that film of singing. Is yeah. In the no, I thought uh, Kuku because this I told you about this relative of mine. Okay. She also used to be a very go uh, good singer. Gradually, she lost her voice, but. Okay. Uh, I when when uh, for a long time she used to be able to sing very well and I thought that uh, you know the fact that Kuku uh, still sings, okay. uh, it, it, you know that that's one one element of her life which is which is kind of uh, which is like a release. Okay. You know, yeah. and uh, also I I could then use the songs uh, very effectively, uh, you know, as montages. I, I think in Tatyajitra uh, is, uh, which is that Chaka Prushaka, there's a play by Somitra, I think is meant to be, I think, schizophrenic also. Also, music is a very important thing there, right? Like, he listens to music, doesn't he? Yeah, he, he yeah. constantly yeah. listens yeah. to classical music. Because I think probably this thing, the, the irrational thing that is no longer this, you know, that this, uh, this thing of a rational world, so probably music has that thing, probably, you know. It, 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 yeah. it's possible, yeah, that sort of thing. Today, okay, there's a question. Today is the birthday of the great filmmaker Ritu Parna Ghosh. Uh, yeah. Can you say something about Ritu Parna Ghosh? Because I think there was, uh, you were, uh, I mean. Ritu, uh, Ritu, Ritu, uh, Ritu understood uh, the Bengali middle class very, very well. Okay. And he portrayed the Bengali middle class uh, very perceptively. Okay. And. Uh, you know, uh, he had a lot more to give, I think. He just died too early, unfortunately. Okay. And I was very fond of him. He, he, I, it's very difficult for me to see him objectively because he was really like a brother, like a sibling, okay. more than anything else. So um, it's uh, difficult for me to say anything, but I think he was a very, very talented filmmaker. Okay. What, what is your uh, thing on um, uh, somebody asking about uh, Tollywood? What is your thing on Uttam Kumar movies? You already said in the interview that you didn't pay much attention to popular cinema, Bengali cinema. Since then, Uttam Kumar was a very, very fine actor, and I think anywhere else, if he had born, been born anywhere else outside of India, okay. he would actually have uh, risen to far greater heights. Even today, so many years after his death, okay. you know. He's still popular. His films, when they're shown, are still popular. So he had uh, that star quality, and then he was also a good actor. He was a very good actor. Uh, as an act, I, I, as an actor, when I acted with him, uh, really uh, felt that you know um, he responded uh, very beautifully. When when you when you act, when when one acts two actors, you. Don't just act separately. You have to respond to each other's the slightest nuances, you know. And he did that. He was. I. I used to admire him tremendously, and uh, I also found him a very uh, gracious and gentlemanly person. Okay, I mean, are you following newer, newer popular cinema in Bengal? Bengali cinema. Bengali? About popular cinema in Bengal. Popular cinema. Is there well, any? I'm. I'm not terribly attracted to popular cinema, I'm afraid. Okay. Okay. So, you're, okay. That's because somebody is asking these questions. 
Yeah. Okay. Uh, which is your favorite film among yours? Somebody is asking. Would you like to answer? My that? own film. Yeah, your own film. I think I uh, I can't just say one. It's very different. Of course, Thirty Six Chorangi Lane was my first film. It was like an inspiration, like a love affair almost. Okay. Uh, that of course is there. But Parumita Ragdeen and the Japanese wife are uh, are two of my uh, better films, I think. Okay. Trying to look at uh, this question. I mean, most of them are most of these questions are hello hello kind of things. <laughs> what, what what aspects of gender would you like to work on is another question. What aspects of gender would you would you still like to work on is a question which somebody is asking. I don't understand what aspects of gender. gender would you still like to work on? Where the question gender. Is, uh, gender. Yeah, gender. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I I would I'm interested in uh, I'm interested in. Um, you know, not only women, I'm also interested in uh, transgender. In fact, I have a transgender character okay. in uh, Film Sonata. Okay. I'm interested in, in, in queer people. I mean, actually interested in people, generally okay. speaking. Okay. I think we've run out of questions and they're there, but uh, they're all largely hello, hello kind of questions. <laughs> I think we'll uh, we uh, you know crossed one hour anyway. Yeah, we can. I think to run out of it. Okay. Will you think of any cinema in this pandemic situation? Can you can this become a subject for film? Pandemic. Uh, no. You know, I've been racking my brains actually, but okay. I haven't yet figured out. Okay. Uh, some ideas keep coming vaguely, but you know, uh, they they. Uh, it's difficult. Uh, they they come vague ideas. Like Minal sense Onturin, that film Onturin, that would have been perfect for a, um, a film during pandemic because the characters never meet. Okay. <laughs> yeah. In fact, there are only two characters. One yeah. is uh, one is in uh, she's uh, incarcerated in a room. Uh, oh. People don't know why, and the other is just talks to her on the telephone. Okay. This, I think well, we will have to get through this pandemic before we start thinking about making films about yeah, the pandemic. Yeah. Quite right. Quite <laughs> yeah. Okay, somebody is asked, were you in any way influenced in Parameter uh, Regin, directly or indirectly influenced by Cries and Whispers? Last game. So I uh, no, no, no. Okay. No. Uh, you know, I, I can't actually, I find it very difficult to um, say uh, what influenced me because it, as I keep saying that it's a very subconscious process. Okay. Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah, we've already discussed this, I think. Somebody from Nepal, Satish Gautam Gautam is, uh, Nepali film is dominated by Bollywood. Can you work for a joint cinema in Nepal and Hindi language? Somebody is asking. I'm sorry, I didn't get that. Something about 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 uh, Indian cinema being a hegemonic relationship with uh, Nepali cinema. That is, uh, Nepali cinema is so overwhelmed by by Indian cinema in some sense. Is it possible to have a collaboration? I don't know how to answer this. I don't know. Yeah, I, uh, it's very difficult for me. To what say. do you think of race? This is an interesting question. So, Jata is uh, race as a political filmmaker. His ideological, uh, what is your ideological? Yeah, I think was very political in, in his, uh, he never, uh, he never preached. But, okay. you know, if you watch his films like Prati Dundi or uh, John Orunno or okay. Mahanagor, you know, okay. <clears throat> immediately you know that he was very aware of what's happening around him. Okay. And he's, uh, he's uh, the, the contemporary reality is okay. reflected and you can see that he is uh, he's a very very um uh, very like kind of again he is a left liberal as a filmmaker that's that's right. very obvious but i think he was again uh, not uh, doctrinaire he was trying to deal with individual choice how does one conduct oneself in society more than you know 
talking yeah, about he, right yeah he he always spoke through individuals but yeah. you know he was really looking into the naxalite question in pratidandi yeah, yeah. how about and looking at it with sympathy looking at it with sympathy trying to understand it at that point uh, ray, ray and mrinal sen were sort of very different from each other and there was a, it was a kind of conflict of some sort almost in the public space to seen as a conflict of some sort ray or sen kind of thing what is your i mean on the naxalite thing itself generally what, what i think uh, i think ray uh, was trying to understand the reason why young uh, young people were becoming naxalites okay more than anything else okay. uh, and i think minal sense uh, sympathies live more with the naxalites okay this is more i think Brunelson, well, I think, was already persuaded. Ray, Ray was in the in the in the weighing his. The Ray was trying to understand. Okay. Ray was trying to understand the reason, the reasons for the unrest, because he realized that you know that people were not doing it for fun. You know, people don't, for instance, uh, risk their lives for the heck of it. Yeah. Ah, oh, but so he understood the reason, and he shows those reasons very well in Brunelson. Mm -hmm. It's one of my favorite films. Yes, so this one. Day. Also, Janaranya is another one of my favorites. Janaranya is a great favorite. Yeah. Yeah. What What about acting? What do you think? I mean, not you, you as an actress. I mean, directing actors. What kind of actors would you pick? What kind of? How would you? How would you direct actors? In the sense, it's of always a pleasure if you can find. Uh, if you can find professional actors, you know. particularly stage actors are very very good at least people who have had some experience with stage like jennifer like shabana like konkona uh, like lilet dubey all these people have had experiences with the stage then another uh, guy that i took uh, in um, in uh, ghori bai riaj onir ban all of these people have had experiences in theater and they are disciplined and uh, you know they uh, they are much more uh, they are i think they uh, somehow uh, i find it easy to work with them i find it's always nice you know if uh, if if you have an intelligent perceptive sensitive actor who is able to uh, convey his or her uh, emotions easily has a mobile face uh, but sometimes you know you have to take actors who are not so so good actors but who look the part completely and you know cast them and then use them like uh, like the little boy in pothe panchali yeah. was not an actor he had to be told everything uh, you know but he looked the part so much yes. that uh, ray took him so i mean you non actors even in kiros tummy does that it takes non actors yeah Use them in some sense without they knowing exactly what they're doing you think that is what the what 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 yeah you are is doing yeah you so can you can use great. them uh, sometimes you know sometimes they will give surprisingly good performances okay. and sometimes not i mean uh, like you know and i don't know in in the normally they said the dog acted very well and who obviously a dog doesn't act right but the point is that when, when a dog is put in certain circumstances you can get a performance of some sort right in the sense of you in in a, in a context that you get i'm saying a dog a dog a dog, a dog. this is for example the animals are used in movies obviously they yeah, can't yeah. Act. they can't yeah. act yeah right? i have some experience of that in 36 chorungi lane okay. dog and cat cat yes 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 <laughs> sir toby right sir toby is the name of the cat sir toby yes sir toby okay right it is very uh, it's it was very interesting sir toby uh whose real name was kitty it was actually a she okay. but um uh the you know hemant who was the uh owner of the cat because apparently cats can't be trained but okay. hemant who was the owner of the cat he was very good very helpful and also okay. we found out certain things about the cat for instance a cat is very particular about its paws being clean Okay. So whenever we wanted the cat to sit still, we would put butter on his paws. Okay. <laughs> and he would lick the butter clean, and he would sit there until the butter was licked clean and his paws were clean. Okay. So you know that really helped. 
and then we found we we had uh, we given him a little bit of tranquilizer, very tiny dose, uh, just to make him calm. But uh, her calm actually it was a she. But you know uh, that we found made her very thirsty. So then we found that if we gave her that and then we gave her milk, then she would immediately have the milk. So these are things that we found out along the way. Okay. Uh, and then for the dog who had to follow uh, Miss Tonam. You know, at the side of the, uh, we at the side uh, uh, on one side, it's not really seen very well. We had to smear some mutton, uh, the the gravy of some mutton curry. Okay. Because uh, it was not going to follow. It was only going to follow <coughs> if it got the smell of mutton. Okay. Another interesting question here: How do you interpret the interpersonal relationship between Paromita and a mother-in-law and the bathing together scene? Well, there, you know, there's a little bit of a gray area okay. because I think particularly from the mother in law's side, because she has not received uh, the kind of love that she has wanted or the kind of understanding, uh, you know, uh, the kind of friendship. So she develops this friendship with Paramita and uh, they both have children who are challenged. So that's one common ground. Okay. Uh, and you know they uh, they form this friendship, but there's also a gray area. You there's there's a scene where they're uh, bathing together, so that's uh, you know some people can consider that a little. Um, and also at the end when she is very sick and Parumita comes, uh, you know then what is playing on the radio is a Vaishnava uh, Padavali, uh, you know. This is a very famous, uh, very famous Vaishnava uh, poem, uh, which is uh, made into, uh, well, these are sung. So that is being uh, sung on the on the television. So that's really very, that she comes. means My friend, you have come after a long time. And if I had died, then I wouldn't have seen you. So uh, that is uh, that's actually uh, spoken to a beloved. Uh, so there is a gray area which I've left deliberately gray. Another question from Prerna is: Time in your films feels very different, unhurried. The story thickens in time. Can you please talk about your script writing process in this context? Yeah, well, um, I don't like to hurry through my films. You know, okay. uh, because I, I want to create moments for the audience to savor. And also, you know, the, the, the story dictates the pace of the film. It depends on the story. I mean, for instance, a Pathe Pachali cannot be made uh, in, a, in, in a, like, uh, for instance, uh, one of the detective stories today. <laughs> the, yeah. the the story itself dictates the pace of the film. Yeah, the French, I think, were some of them found it very slow. In some that was a complaint against Patel Panchali because this subsequently. Uh -huh, but then once I found that people, you know, hurriedly came in whenever you had a show, they they were coming from us. Then uh, it took them about ten minutes. Then they get used to that pace. Then they start identifying with the characters and so on. You have to have a little bit of patience and. I think film viewing needs a little bit of training. Yeah, I think watching film itself needs training of some sort. You have to. You yeah, yeah, if you're too impatient and if you can't understand something, you immediately leave and you forget about it. Uh, then everything has to be handed to you on a platter, you know. Yeah. Everything has to be spelt out. What so, in that case, you know, all the nuances, all the layers of meaning, those uh, go away. You then you then you might as well watch a rom com. In fact, yeah, I think people must be able to understand the interpersonal uh, body language and all that to be able to read that requires no. a sensitivity. That's right. I think I mean that you have to generally watch films and develop as a as an audience also. What yeah. Is your question. What is your next film? Man, that's a question. Uh, well, uh, I, I don't like to talk about a film. You know, I'm very superstitious. I don't like to talk about a film until we've started. Okay. Well, I think that's but it's about things that are happening. You know, yeah. it's it's a it's not a it's not a period film or anything like that. It's and a present. 
given the present uh, this COVID crisis or whatever, and the fact that it's likely to go on, have you guys have you thought of uh, how you're going to go about shooting films and what exactly? Uh, yeah, that we are we are contemplating that, but we haven't come uh, come to any uh, any definite decision. We actually have to see. We actually have to see okay. how things are developing. Okay. Will you have to? I mean, will you have to alter your entire uh, perspective on cinema? What how to, What kind of films you're going to make because of this crisis? What do you think? No, so we have to think about sanitizing the area properly and taking precautions. Okay. So on. So, Rita Dutta asks, "What is your take on death in the Ganj, the subversive version of masculine death in the Ganj?" I thought it was very, very. Uh, it was very good film. And Konkona, I read the script. Uh, okay. She also liked me. In 36, she also had the whole film uh, in uh, the picture, the visuals of the film very clearly in her mind. And uh, that film, that script went through many, many uh, versions, you know, because she kept correcting it. And I think it finally turned out to be a extremely well made film. It was a, I, uh, my take on it is that it is in many ways a feminist film because it is about, uh, as I said, the idea of feminism has changed to include all the marginalized people. Here it's uh, about the, you know, patriarchal system where uh, men are expected to be strong and any man who's weak uh, is uh, bullied to the uh, you know, point of being driven to suicide. Okay. So I think any, any other questions? I think we've run out of questions here. Any, anything, anything interesting? No. Okay, so then we'll, let's wind up. Okay, we'll wind up. So thanks, thanks, uh, thanks for not DM. Thank you very much. Talking to you. Thank, Thank you, Raghavan. Pleasure, pleasure. Bye bye.